Hi and welcome to the Christmas Elves After Effects template customization tutorial. In this video I'm going to show you how to replace the faces, I'm going to show you how to replace your text, I'm going to show you how to put your logo in the closing scene and introduce you to the control layers in each scene. So let's get started by going into our After Effects and we're going to open the file and this is a, a CS4 file. And so right now I'm using the latest version of After Effects, CC 2015. And when you use a version of After Effects that's different from the original, where it was originally created, you'll get this message that says this project must be converted. Just click OK and should open. And it's going to tell me now that I'm missing two fonts. The project still works with any font you choose. These are just the fonts that I used in the original project and you can choose to install them and the links are in the PDF file uh, or you can just click OK and everything will be fine and After Effects will substitute the missing fonts with uh, just a standard font. So let's take a look in our project panel and you'll see how our project is organized. Our first folder is our elements folder and this contains all of our pre-comps and all the elements needed to create the animation. Our next folder is a render comp, which contains your final render comp that you will set to render when you're done. We have the replace heads here folder, and this contains all of our pre-comps for replacing heads. Now for each character in each scene, you are able to choose whatever head you like. So let's say you have 20 people that need to be in this video, you can import uh, and replace all the heads in each placeholder. And then for each character, there's a slider control, I'll show you that in a minute, where you can choose whatever head you want. So just because it says replace head 01 doesn't mean it's going to be on character 01. You can choose whichever head you like. The next folder is the replace text here folder. And this is where we have all of our text pre-comps. And then the scenes folder where we have all of our scenes. And these are all laid out here in our render comp. So if we go to our timeline, uh, you'll see we have all of our scenes laid out. We have a fade in and a fade out layer. You can rearrange these if you like. If you would rather have this scene you know, show up a little bit later, you can just select it, move it. You can pretty much move anything around the timeline. You, Nothing is uh, locked in or set in stone. So let's go ahead and get started by customizing scene one. So in a render comp, we can just double click on the scene one layer and that will open up our pre comp. As you can see in the timeline, we have a layer called scene 01 character options 01. And if you hit E on your keyboard, you can bring up our effects controls. And if you just double click on any of those, you can open up the effects controls panel. I would suggest moving this into like its own panel so it'll always be open so you don't have to switch between tabs in any of these panels. Uh, so we're going to do that. I'm going to make a little more room here. Okay, so for our first selector, you can see that we have select character face and these are all numbered and these are all connected to our replace heads here. So if you replace, you want head 01, you're just going to type 1 and it'll change to that head. We can also change our bodies from a male body to a female body and vice versa. Very easy. We can change the skin color with our color picker. Now there's a couple of different shoe styles that you could use or you can just you know leave it as the elf shoes and you can also change the color using the color picker. Now you can't really change the colors for the elf outfits uh, they're just kind of elfy, and red and green is usually what they are. So um, if you want to do that, you can go into our Elements folder, and you'll go to Textures. And if you double-click on any of these patterns, you can change the colors by selecting the shape layers and then going up to our uh, Tools area, and you can change the color here. So our next Controls layer is the Text Banner Controls. And this is where you can change the width and the height of your text banner. Uh, if you'd like to move it, you can just select the text banner box layer. And with your select tool, just move it around. Move it wherever you like in the comp viewer. If we go back to our text banner controls, you can change the colors. 
using the color picker. And to change the text, you'll want to go to your project panel, go to the Replace Text Here folder, and double click on the Replace bo Text Box 01. Then you have your text layer in here, and you can change it to whatever you like. And with that layer selected, you can go to your Character panel and change this font. And you would change the color of your text in the Character panel as well with the Color Picker. If we go back to Scene 1, you'll see that our text layer is longer. So you want to go into the Text Banner Controls and make that a little wider. There we go. And as you can see now, it's kind of covering up our character, so we're going to drag that down. And you can move this, you know, anywhere you like. If you want it to be uh, smaller overall, you can just hit S on your keyboard and change the scale here. There you go. And you can even put that back and change that however you like. Now, if you wanted to change the background uh, in each scene, there's a background layer and it's the very, very last layer. If you select that and go to your con effects controls panel, uh, we have a gradient ramp effect applied and you would just change the start color and the end color with the color pickers. Change it to whatever you like. If you want it to be a solid background, just make both of those colors the same and you've got your solid background. Okay, so let's get started with the heads. Let's go to the Replace Heads Here folder, twirl that down and double click to open the Replace Head composition. As you can see, we have a text layer that says place the chin on the bottom of the comp. And that's what you want to do when you import your face and cut it out. You want to place the chin as close as possible to the bottom uh, because we have our character's heads connected to the next. And if you have your head not on the bottom, there's going to be a gap between the head and the character's body. So you want to make sure that you're as close as possible to that edge on the bottom. And these uh, text instructions here are a guide layer, so they're only going to show up in this composition. They won't show up in any other comp. So the first thing we want to do is import our photo. So we'll go to File, Import, File, right here, and click Open. And we're going to drag this imported photo from our project panel into the Replace Head timeline. As you can see, it's a little too big, so we're going to hit S on our keyboard and we're going to scrub on these numbers here and scale it down. Remember, we're going to place the chin close to the edge, the bottom edge. All right, and now we need to cut out the head. So the way we do that is with the pen tool. So we select that and in our comp viewer, we're going to just click anywhere to create one point. Then we're going to create another point and then just drag on that so we can create a curve. And we'll just keep going. We'll go all the way around. And don't worry if it's not 100% perfect right now. You can always go back and make some adjustments. And then you want to make sure that you close off or connect this last point so it's a closed mask. Here we go. So move him down. And this placeholder, we're just, you know, going to turn it off or you can delete it. So you can see we can zoom in here. And we have this little gap here we need to fix. If you hit G on your keyboard, uh, if you hit it a couple times, it sort of cycles through these pen tools. So we're going to add a point here. I'm going to move that in. I'm going to do the same here. Just add a point. This is a little hard to see. I'm going to change the color of this mask. There we go. Then you can also select any of the points and just move them. This point has a hard sort of edge to it. If you want to create some handles so you can create curves, you know, hit G on your keyboard. And we're going to select that and then drag to create some handles and just drag this out and that creates a curve. And I'm holding on the space bar while I'm moving around and clicking inside here. And the space bar will move your comp around if you just have your 
just a select tool doesn't really do anything. So if you hold down the space bar, it temporarily activates our hand tool or a move tool. So just letting you know that. And we see another hard edge here. We're going to go ahead and hit G on our keyboard. I'm going to create some handles there. All right. There we go. I'm going to zoom out of that. Now let's go to scene number one. We already have that open. And there's our guy. In our character options, we already have slider number one set. Now if we change it to two, it's going to be a different head. So the project is set up this way so that any animated character can be male or female depending on the different faces that you choose. And you can choose to use the same two faces throughout the entire project, or you can use a different face for every single character. It is totally up to you. Now we may want to make some adjustments to our hat. It's a little too big here. So the thing you can do is go to the replace head. You can make the head a little, little tiny bit bigger. You don't want to go past the top of this composition. It all needs to fit inside. And again, it needs the head needs to be very close to the edge of the bottom of this comp. If we go back to scene one. His head's a little bigger, but now his hat is all weird. So let's double click on the scene 01 character 01 comp to open that up. And we're going to select the hat layer. It's usually the first layer in the timeline. And you can just move it by selecting it. You may need to make it smaller, so we'll hit S on our keyboard and bring up the scale property. And scale that down however you like. There we go. Go back to scene one. His hat pretty much fits on his head now. So you would just repeat that process for each scene, changing the names, changing the faces, adjusting the hats as you see fit. So let's go back to our render comp and customize these last two scenes. So if we go to scene nine and double click to open that up, we have four characters and they're all holding these signs. And again, you have character options in here for each of these characters. So you can select any, any head and any body type or even repeat faces if you like. And to change our text here, we're going to go to back to our project panel, go to the replace text here folder. And then we're going to replace the sign. It says replace sign 01. We'll double click on that one. And then you can double click on the text layer here and type in your message. You can also select the text and move it anywhere. And let's go back to scene nine. And there we go. So you would open up the other sign comps to change the messages. If we go back to our render comp, you'll see that our text is updated and you can change that text however you like. And if we go to scene 10, this is our fun little animated wreath with our characters as ornaments. Let's go to scene 10, double click to open that up. Again, you have your text banner control, which controls the colors and the size. And you also have a replace closing logo here composition. And that composition also is in the replace text here folder. If you double click to open the replace closing logo here comp, this is where you would drag and drop your logo. So another way to import files is to just double click inside a blank space in the project panel. Just double click in there. I'm going to import my file or open it. Click OK. And then again, we're going to drag our file into our timeline. We can't see anything because I need to scale this down. There we go. If we go to scene 10, there's our logo. And you can see it's sort of covering up the, the wreath. You can choose to keep it here or you can go into the timeline and just select that layer and drag it to the bottom of our layer stack. But make sure it's still above the background if you would like it to be behind the wreath instead of in front. And the next thing we want to do is replace the text. So if you go to the replace text here folder in the project panel, go to the replace text box 10 for scene 10, double click to open that up and then just double click on the text. There we go. Just going to move that up. 
and go to scene 10 and our text has been updated. So that pretty much covers all the basics. If you ever have any questions, you can feel free to email me marissa at fluxvfx.com. Please comment or leave a rating. I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you.